Well, hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good day. Hope everybody's doing great today. My name is Federico from the Rum Lab and Zavi. Uh, welcome. Uh, thanks for joining us together or joining us here today. Um, before we start really quickly, there's a lot of great, great people that are joining us on this conversation. Uh, this is actually something that we wanted, we've been working around. I want to do something on Fridays here and there, but as the things are getting prettier, we want to be outside. So I keep on dragging, but he helped me. He put my, he's like, come on, Fed, let's do this. And he it happen. <laughs> I was able to get other people on board that not only, primarily because they are ex ex extremely important for this, today's conversation. Uh, really quickly, for everybody who's new or has been here today, uh, to your right on Crowdcast, you're going to see a chat box. I already see John Atkins there. Uh, thank you for being here already. Uh, as people are starting to sign up, if you have any questions, the question box is in the very bottom. Uh, for those who are right now seeing on Facebook, on different Facebook groups, come on over to Zavi, which is Z A V V Y dot C O, uh, where you can attend and participate from the chat box and the questions. Today's agenda is probably be around 30, 40 minutes talking about main presentation. Uh, and then we'll share a little bit of contact information. Uh, and then we'll do 15, 20 minutes of our QA. If there's questions to ask, all right. Um, enough said. Let's, let's let the rum education begin. Oh, right, you see, there you go. I did a, blo a small blooper there. Let me bring up everybody on board. So, uh, so we have, first of all, ladies. We have to start with the ladies. We have to be caballerosos. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have Benedict, we have Bailey, we have Eric, we have Craig, and we have Pete. Um, and hopefully, let's do this. Uh, if everybody can just talk up, uh, talk a little bit about, about themselves, who they are, and how are they relating to the spirit industry. And we'll start with the lady, Benedict. Well, it's always difficult to talk about yourself, but um, the reason I'm here is because of these gentlemen, Craig, um, that I met uh, when I was doing my job, which is I'm the uh, fifth generation of the Hardy Cognac family. Um, have been around the block a few times because I've been in this business a little more than 30 years. Um, I was trained as a lawyer, but I was bored. <laughs> Decided to join the family business and uh, I'm in charge of, uh, I'm the brand ambassador for the company, uh, PR, marketing, and sales in the United States and North America. And that's how I met Craig, and he's the reason why I'm here tonight, because he mentioned Avua, and uh, he made uh, the deal possible. So that's All how right. I'm here, guys. Okay. So that being said, I think we should just pass it on to uh, Craig. Yes. The Masked Man. Yes, well, I'm here <laughs> Here at Picasso uh, restaurant at the iconic Bellagio, um, and there's nobody around, so I can take my mask off to make sure you guys, everyone can hear me well. Uh, yeah, my, my name is Craig Shuttler. I'm the master mixologist and executive director of beverage for the MGM Resorts International Company. Um, so I run the, the beverage program from a creative to a strategy perspective, and uh, known Benedict for many years, um, has been very uh, uh, appreciative and in awe of the product that she produces. Um, and then the, the, when Pete and I started talking about, you know, doing products that we could, we could offer, um, that's sort of how uh, this whole, you know, project started. So I'm, I'm privileged and honored to be a part of a group of producers. I'm not a producer. Uh, I have the honor of telling the stories. All right. All right. So now let's jump to uh, Pete, who brought these two people on board here to today's meeting. There we go. Pete, you're also in Vegas, hey guys. right? Say that again? You're also in Vegas. I'm in Vegas as well. Yeah, I'm out in Summerlin. Uh, and it's finally cooling down, although we're getting some smoke, so it's been a little weird. But uh, but yeah, I'm the uh, founder of Abu Akashasa. Um, as well as an aqua beat we call Swole. And uh, you guys may have seen me on uh, the Zabby channel under Tiki by the Sea, which is an event that I run, uh, that I do uh, live sessions on Tuesdays. So that's that's how I came here. And 
you know, Fetty and I were talking about, there's some really rad sugarcane spirits that are coming out. Um, we should get everybody together, talk about them, let you guys know about it, get the word out. So excited to kind of talk about some, some different approaches uh, and products that are out this year. Thank you. And uh, I'm gonna bring Eric on a second here. Hey everybody, hi Belly, thanks. I mean, Betty, uh, I'm Eric Kay and I'm the founder of Holmes Key Rums. And we were set up pretty much to do limited edition rums. Uh, I got tired of not being able to get all the rums I wanted in America, so I decided to start bringing them in. Um, and we just about hit our one year anniversary this week. And uh, we came out with three rums this year, which are all different and limited editions. So I think it fits right in with the theme. Excellent. Um, and a, a little Go note, uh, before, I'm sorry, before jumping into the next guy who I'm going to introduce, I you know, was speaking to Bailey about this idea a couple of years ago. He's like, you're nuts, but you know, if you love rum, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are on a panel together. <laughs> Two or three years later, so, <laughs> on to Bailey. All right. Uh, well, hi, everybody. I'm Bailey Pryor. I'm the founder of Real McCoy Rum with my lovely wife, Jennifer, who's back there somewhere. Uh, yeah, we've been having a great time building the Real McCoy brand, and it's fun to do a, this sort of transition from being a filmmaker to uh, being a rum runner and uh, meeting all the wonderful people along the way in our fantastic rum family that exists all over the world. And it's a pleasure to come back here and talk on, uh, with, with, with Fetty again in the Rum Lab on Zabby. All right. Uh, well, that was a perfect intro. Well, today, just to clarify, today's topic is limited edition rums. Worth like noticing, talking about. Uh, so we we there are many, uh, but we went and did a list of uh, about uh, around ten brands that we all recommend. And actually, all together, even though many of these gentlemen here or and females are part of, uh, or they have their own brand, they also are very um, beautiful people. They share their opinion about other brands that are worth uh, sipping, enjoying, and tasting. So let's do this. Let's uh, start with the first one. Um, we have different topics, and then. Uh, we'll start with the first brand that we consider being uh, very important to talk about. And for this, of course, we're going to repeat. He is the founder of this brand. And of course, that's why we invite him because no better person to talk about this new expression from our blog. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks again for having me, Fetty. So with Copan, and Craig will give a little backstory, but just a little context for people who don't know. So Abwa is produced by Katia Espiritu Santu, who's a third generation producer in Rio State. So we're, our facility is about four hours outside of the city uh, of Rio, really kind of like cattle country, rolling hills, beautiful, very remote. Uh, cane is a state grown. There are four types. It's machete chopped and pressed within 12 hours, which is really important. It's breaking down effectively immediately. Airborne yeast fermented for 24 hours, and it's single distilled in an Alembic pot still. So you're going to get a lot of character out of it. Um, the spent cane fires the still, and the rest is gravity fed. So there's no electricity used in this process, just super rustic old school style production. And, uh, and then we have a tradition of aging, and cachaca can be aged in 30 plus types of wood. So French oak was first, but it begat all this unique experimentation in native wood aging. And that kind of brought, you know, Craig and I together and, you know, we've done a lot with some of our marks. You can actually go back uh, for a second, Fetty. So uh, within that series, we had a desire to play around even more, right? There, in a, it's very Brazilian to just say, hey, we have these materials, let's try and use them. Uh, so the Copan edition is actually taking a product we make, Tapi Noai, really, really obscure wood, uh, really limited unto itself. Tapi Noir is a barrel that we recommissioned. Um, you actually could flip to the next one. So barrel we recommissioned that our distiller's father used to use, hadn't been used in decades. So we broke that, that literally it said dormant for decades. We broke it down, sand it down, rebuilt it. You can see that barrel there. It's a large 5,000 liter barrel. We only have one. There's no toasting or charring. 
And so that was the place that we came from. And I'll, I'll hand it over to Craig to kind of talk about how we ended up here. But we came from this process of already experimenting with native woods and this deep tradition that's been going on for hundreds of years in Brazil uh, and saying, hey, where else can we take this? Yeah, so thanks, Pete. Uh, you know, just to, to give a little of the backstory, you know, when in tasting in a program with 430 different venues to oversee, uh, I have the privilege of tasting a lot of product. And when I had tasted some of the Avoa Cachasas, it was something that I haven't tasted before. And particularly, and, and Pete and I have had this conversation numerous times, the Amburana expression, the native, the native wood um, in Brazil, was one of those things that you can't replicate. Um, so that started that conversation of here in Las Vegas, we have guests and customers uh, come from all over the world, all over the United States, and they make a conscious decision to book a flight, book a hotel room, take time off, to spend time with us for an experience that they can't get back at home. So if that's the case, we want to try and we want to offer products that those individuals can't get back at home and reward them and, and, and give them that experience here in Las Vegas uh, that is unique and interesting, which has become synonymous with the MGM brand. Uh, so in, in talking to, to Pete about some of his products, um, we thought, you know, okay, well, how can we take this to the next level and how can we uh, make something that is unique to drive people and or uh, provide that experience that you can't get at your local uh, watering hole or your local uh, uh, liquor store. So then with my relationship with Benedict Hardy, who I think produces some of the most beautiful cognacs uh, available to the market, um, the, the, the sort of thought process came like, okay, well, we know Benedict's cognacs are amazing. We know Pete's cachasas are amazing. Can we make them not necessarily better, but can we make them different and how to, to elevate or provide a different experience through them? And with those, the beautiful floral and, and honey and heather notes that, you know, Benedict's Hardy comes and then the earthy grassiness of the cachaça and then the tapenawa wood and where it adds that extra layer of that, you know, subtle tobacco and vanilla, uh, how is that going to work together? So we put the two of them together um, and tried and, and created this product that is distinctly unique for not only the rum and sugarcane industry, but the spirit industry, I think, as a whole, um, that we put this project together and it was originally designed to be only available here in Las Vegas and only available at MGM Resorts. And after we had the product, I, you know, as a steward of our industry and talking with Pete and Benedict, we felt that it's very selfish of us to hold back something that's cool and unique and make it just for us. So it is a, a really interesting and unique product. Not to say that there's not things coming on the road that will be unique to us, and you'll have to come to Las Vegas and, and come to the Bellagio or the R or the MGM Grand or other, other properties to have them, um, but the Copan specifically, because it was our first venture that was so cool and so interesting, we got so excited about it. Um, we, we thought it was worth, you know, we should share it. That's just, you know, being part of the industry and, and, and part of uh, people that love sugarcane spirits, um, it was not the right decision for all of us to say, let's keep it. And Benedict, how did you feel when they called you to do this experiment? I said to myself, crazy Craig, another idea. <laughs> <laughs> another thing that we, you know, it's interesting because we had only do that, we, we had done that once prior uh, in, in a significant project with Aaron Distillery in, in the, uh, on the Isle of Aaron with Scotch. And it was with um, barrels that were aged uh, between 10 and 50 years. So they were still full of strength and they had a lot of things to give. And I, I contacted our blender, the one that buys the, the and, and selects the barrels for us. And he was very, you know, he had never honestly tried cachaça. So I had to go and purchase some and selection that I have in the little city of Cognac is not the greatest, but mm -hmm. uh, there is one called Cachaça Le Blanc that you're probably uh, familiar with. And I tasted him on it. We had a discussion. He wanted to know exactly uh, um, what I felt and how I could uh, really select the barrels with him. 
So what we sent to Pete was something that was carefully uh, selected. Uh, it's under 10 years of aging. It's limousine oak. Limousine is, um, is a kind of oak that grows in the center of France. And that's what we use exclusively in cognac. We don't have to use it exclusively, uh, but at Hardy, we feel that the grain of the, the wood is not as tight. And when it evaporates, I mean, whatever remains in the barrel has more color and more concentration. So it's true that we probably lose more than if we would use another oak, but it's definitely what we want to accomplish. And for um, a, a clear spirit like a chasa, I thought after even after the oak that you were using, the, 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 the native oak that you were using from Brazil, I think that was adding a touch of sophistication, if I could say, to the blend. So um, it was a decision with Craig that I, I took right away, but it was a lot of thinking, you know, to know which oak would work the best. And right. I have, I, I cannot wait for Pete to send me a case. So at least, <laughs> so at least I can, <laughs> I can enjoy that with friends. <laughs> that's, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, I just poured myself some. It's really, uh, I honestly think this might've been some of the best thing we've ever yeah. made. Um, so, you know, thank you guys for being a part of it. And, you know, from our side, um, one was, okay, this is a great idea. And then two was how do we actually do it? And believe it or not, getting things into Brazil is not so easy. It's so very that was complicated. Really, really <laughs> very complicated. Thank you for bearing with us on that. Um, so, you know, that was a many, many month process, maybe a year process, honestly. And, yes. and uh, yeah, and, and, and technically you're not supposed to bring wet barrels in uh, into Brazil. So we had to do a little wink, wink, nod, nod, um, you know, with customs to kind of get through in the first place. Uh, but after many, many months, we got the barrels in. This is the first of what will be a series. I think Craig referenced it. So. Um, we have four of these lovely barrels. The first one is Copan, which is it's actually named after a work by Oscar Niemeyer. So he's a famous architect of the 50s and 60s in Brazil and well beyond. And so we are using kind of his works as a way to articulate what these releases are. So this one, the future ones, and, and whatever we may do in, ahead. Um, and so we got the barrels there. We put four different types of our cachaça in Tapinoa, Ambarana, which Craig mentioned, uh, a French oak aged then into the wet cognac barrels as well. And then our still drink 90 proof to age. And that'll be kind of like the last one that we bring out. Um, but there are only uh, 600 bottles of this. Uh, they broke a case on the way from New Jersey to California, so now there's 594 bottles of this. Wow, so, <laughs> yeah, that's really really okay, that? only send me two bottles. <laughs> <laughs> I understand your point, and don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> we the lines. That case was in front of my location, right? That was somebody else's allocation. Is, is yeah, yeah, that was wow. yours. That was that was you know for for the homies, I guess, if you will. You know, we got we got your point. We got your point. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, this this sits in Tapinoa for over a year, which is our usual aging process. Long aging is not very typical in Brazil. It's very hot, tropical climate, etc. And then we ended up tasting along with Craig at three month increments and deciding that after nine months of finishing this in the hardy cast, it was ready to go. Okay. And then we underwent a, a, an op, you know, the, the uh, path to making the package and label, getting everything approved. There you go. Uh, we're really Who did excited. Who did your packaging? Uh, so it's, uh, we have a, a minority partner in the company who did, did the package in general. It's from the UK actually. Okay. And the, the bottle was inspired by actually Oscar Niemeyer as well. So kind of that architectural era, we really wanted to harken back to, you know, the real Brazil and something unique and authentic. And, you know, this is not a whiskey. It's not a gin. It's something very different unto itself. Sure. Um, so, yeah, super excited. This is now available um, via Curiata. So you guys can order it. It'll get shipped in early October. 
Um, there's a little bit that's trickling out to a few states like Colorado, California, New York, uh, and then I'm sure you'll be able to find it at MGM uh, when you guys make it out that way. Soon, we hope. Yeah, uh, back to the, the 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 process of you know, Pete mentioned we tasted every three months. You know, I think it was very important for both of us that we didn't want the uh, sugarcane distillate to overpower the the hearty cast and the cognac flavor. We didn't want the cognac cast mm -hmm. to overpower the sugar distillate. So we were we were very uh, we wanted to make sure that they both complemented and they improved each other than mask a you know whether the 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 cask is you know you, we've all had a lot a lot of spirits that are aged in a, a bigger cask that then covers up a maybe not so great distillate um but we wanted to ensure that we had the best of both worlds so we get those influences from the cognac cask uh from benedict but also still keep true to that sugarcane distillate um sure. for the, the reason why you would want to drink pachasa because if you didn't if you want to drink cognac then you would drink cognac there's no sense in making pachasa taste like cognac um right so we were very you know uh in tune in making sure that we still kept the the raw ingredient flavor profile um there so you get kind of the best of both worlds yeah, yeah I, I really think back to your point Benedict is it really adds an elegance. It I mean, really the adds flavors a, really play it's nicely together, play together. Uh, in kind of its interaction. So it's to Craig, it's it's not over there's not overpowering each other. They're really acting in harmony and adding depth to character. We really wanted to make sure this was different than Tapinoa, but that it still retained the Tapinoa character. Sure. Perfect. So I, I shared the link. Uh, a little bit a minute ago where you can buy it um and certainly we'll be sending it through the rum lab more information about where we can get this link. but i'll actually we'll, i'm gonna put it really quickly again awesome thank you yeah we're really excited this is this is new for kashasta honestly you know i know this has existed in a number of other categories for a while and you know we believe that kashasta rum etc is deserves to be sipped and enjoyed and and things like this that are not easy and not cheap to produce. Uh, hopefully people will recognize the quality and, and really be on the lookout for it. So super excited to share it. Also excited to hear from these guys on, on what they're doing. All right, well, thank you very much. Thanks, Craig. Thanks, Benedict, uh, for being part. Craig, it's, it's super interesting because I in the MGM you have Samba, uh, you have like there's like six or a couple of Brazilian restaurants. They're not all managed by the by the uh, hotel themselves, right? Some are, are rented out the space. Yeah, we, we, there's different models um, and in our operations, whether it's a you know in an agreement with a partner, whether it's wholly owned, whether it's a full lease. Um, so it, it, we 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 operate in several different models, um, you know, in an in an effort to provide the best. Uh, offering and the best selection of food and beverage venues to the, the guests that come in and enjoy Las Vegas. But when, if we go to Vegas, which bar eventually, uh, as things are opening, which bar should we go to have some of the, of the Copan? Uh, it, I mean, it'll be in almost all of them. Uh, you know, as we, we work through the, the current state we're in and, and the yeah. restrictions and, and guidelines based from uh, government and, and health and safety, um, you know, it, it's I, I, it, it's tough to say where to go now. Um, the restaurants are open, so here in Picasso, where I'm sitting at right now, absolutely uh, prime craft steak, uh, John George Steakhouse, Carbone, Bardo, and there's a slew of restaurants that it will be available to to uh, enjoy and experience. Excellent, um, Ben. Uh, Benedict, I think is or, so. You told me a little while ago that you might wanted to step out because it's quite late in France right now. Yeah, because you, you're the one in the United States and I'm in France. Yes, if you don't mind, I'm happy that I have met you, Craig. I'll be probably in touch soon. I'm uh, wishing you really all the very best because you are entrepreneurs and I, I like that. I really do. Um, I have respect for people that dare. And uh, with Craig, you're in good hands, <laughs> for sure, because he's a daredevil. <laughs> so, <laughs> everybody, thank you very much, Not and uh, enjoy the rest of the conversation. Whatever you need me for, and if you want to continue an experience like that, I'm all yours. 
Okay. All right. Thank you. Have a, Thank have you a so good much, night. Thank you. Ciao. All right. All right. So let's go to the let's go to the next expressions. Uh, we have two expressions here that we listed here: is the Q 2009 and the privateer specific selection. And this I actually so let's let's just start with the Don Q. Um, this is what I have uh, some information that uh, Robert Bird shared. Uh, at the same time, Roberto Serrayes told me this. Initially, they this is something that came out now for for 2020. They, it was initially to be launched in in the UK as an a little bit overproof, and then come to the US market. All this obviously with all the COVID things, it did not happen. Um, Roberto told me this morning that. For the 2009 single barrel cast strength, uh, which is the one that they did for UK, is 90, 94% proof, and it's only available in the, in the US. And then 624 cases were done. That's the total of 3,700 3, bottles out there. Um, of course, I'm from Puerto Rico. I love uh, to promote my Puerto Rican rum. Uh, Don Q, which is quite interesting. There's there's two stories here. This actually this logo here that we're seeing uh, is uh, the previous logo, but there was one actually before one of uh, this logo before where it was Don Q and the Q right next to the Don. And then in the states it was quite complicated for people to read it, so they'll be like, "Hey, give me a dunk," and then they're like, "No, no, it's not a dunk. It's the Don Q." <laughs> they separated the logo branding so people can clearly say, "Hey, this is Don Q." Uh, the first release, they, the first release they did was the 2005, then they did the 2007. Um, the 2005 is that is nowhere to be found. Uh, 2007, there's some uh, places that still have it. And the 2009, I actually am eager to try. Well, I do have a bottle. I, I lie, I do have a bottle, and um, and it's. Phenomenal. The have you gentlemen be, been able to try it? No, I haven't tried the, the, the 2009. But I have corrected several people who've called that that room donk. I'm like, no, bro, donk you. I never heard that, but I find yeah, that very yeah. amusing. Yeah, uh, I have the Fetty. I would tell you now, me some. You know, I'll give you my address. Yeah, not the new one. The 07s are wonderful, and the 05s were wonderful, but. I have not tried the new one yet. Well, they had they had uh, the Miami Rum Congress hidden available, and uh, you guys are part of the rum family. You should have some rum. What is, we gotta we gotta fix that. Uh, Craig, you you guys sell is the is the Cosmopolitan part of the MDM or no? Uh, it is not. It is not. Okay, I think that was the only hotel that had the Don Q line in in Vegas, like uh, throughout the whole. Hotel hotel program um uh, we, we definitely have it at uh carbone um they have a fairly extensive rum selection um mario carbone the the chef and part owner of that of major food group the group is very um has, a, has an affinity to rum so there's a rum cart we've got you know old rums from you know the the 1950s to my like it, it's it's a very extensive program and has a lot of depth um so we definitely have the the don q line so yeah, that's a cool program that's an aria correct so that's an aria yeah, yeah. so for our, our portfolio it's mgm Mandalay bay excalibur luxor new york new york park mgm aria bellagio mirage um in las vegas and then we have a property in massachusetts which i saw you brought up the privateer which i can't wait to, to talk about um, Maryland, Cleveland, uh, or Ohio, uh, New York, Mississippi, like Michigan, Michigan. So, yep. So, uh, well, yes. Robert Robert Burr says on the tasting notes: uh, the medium amber color suggests a long resting period in oak. Aromas of fruit and spice with smoky oak that dominate before honey butter and vanilla over fruit cakes. Uh, and with just a hint of molasses. And on the palate, a, blonde, a bold entry of toast oak leads to a creamy mouthfeel with buttered 
cookies, a scented by vanilla and creme brulee before hints of bitter cacao and uh, shared oat linger in the medium lung finish. That's, that sound, that sound poetic, poetic, sound really nice. Um, all right. <laughs> Especially when you read it, bro. <laughs> well, if you're able to understand me, that's the other part of that. <laughs> What's he muffling about? I love that. All right. <laughs> the next expressions that we're going to talk about are the, uh, the privateer rooms. Um, so here, actually, Maggie Campbell, who's a uh, master distiller or, or head distiller and president of uh, privateer rum they did a tasting now during the COVID, and this is actually their 2020 2020 releases this is a massive amount of releases uh but when i started reading a little bit more about it i understood why is that they do maybe 10 cases or 20 cases at the most uh maybe a little bit more a little bit less but that's the average of the all these selections that they have they have uh, so they re they released the Lee Alliance Cognac has finished rum, which is the distiller's drawer 104. Uh, that's proof at 100, uh, 111, aged for three years, barreled in American, uh, New American chart number three, and finished in Cognac cast. Then we have distiller's drawers number 102, the Rum Glow Distiller's Pale rum, which is proof at 122, aged for four years and two months, barreled and used uh, bourbon barrels. Uh, we have the Carpentier Shared Cast Strength Rum, which is the Steelers Drawer 103, uh, which is proof at 110, aged for two years and nine months. Uh, and that one, they produced 229 bottles. We have the distiller jars 101, Song of the Wolf, Rum Cast Strum, uh, uh, no, Song, Song of the Wolf, Rum Cast Strum, uh, that's 110 proof, aged for three years, New American Oak Shard, number three. They did 198 bottles. Oh my God, the list is very long. It's just, it's, it's amazing. It's just, uh, it's mesmerizing. I'm supposed to choose one, but I wanted to share like <laughs> the great thing. How many expressions they just launched in one year, right? And this is it's amazing. Yeah, it, it's there's a lot that goes into all those individual, just even just from a technical operational standpoint to do that, you know. Uh, so it is amazing to, to see that. The great thing about Maggie, which we don't get from any other is really is she goes public with her experiments i mean she's always yeah. exploring maybe if we try this or maybe we try it in a whiskey cask or a pure pot still or this and instead of just keeping them to herself twice a year she'll put out her distiller's drawer and everybody tries to run to massachusetts and grab these bottles <laughs> here in a day um yeah. and i don't know anybody else who's putting out these limited edition amazing just experiments like she is um, and, and what's really cool about privateer is, and I didn't even know that was part of the, the, the talk today, and I was, you know, thoroughly surprised and you know, excited. Uh, we actually, we have a property in Western Massachusetts in Springfield, um, and we did a single barrel bottling of her rums in a wine cask from a winery in Massachusetts as well that's only available at MGM Springfield. And we, we partnered with them because, I mean, when we when I was out there for the opening, we tasted through her products. And I think she, she makes an outstanding, unique and, and you know, great tasting sugarcane products. Um, so it's great to see that, you know, uh, unfortunately, it's not available in Las Vegas, so I can't have it here. Um, but it is available in, in Massachusetts at our property there. And it's, you know, it's a cool product. To do that. She makes great stuff. But wait. There's more. I gotta finish my list. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have the five-year-old New England rum, which is drawer 99, uh, five years, uh, proof 122, uh, New American oak, 172 bottles, and then the five-year-old Queen Share rum, drawer 100, 131 proof, aged for five years, New American oak barrel, and the sea smoke. Number two, Scotch cast finish. I think this is the last one that they did, 
which is the drawer number five, 105, uh, proof 108, aged for two years and nine months, barreled in that Proya Scotch cast. If I, men- I don't know if I mentioned that correctly. Um, Lafroy. Mm. Lafroy, yeah, it's good. Hey, Fetty, uh, there's been an ask on the Crowdcast here. Uh, do you have links for these others, the Don Q and Privateer, that people can can at least go try and get, you know, where applicable by state? Absolutely, absolutely. I will. Yeah. I'll, I'll be. I'll share that very soon. I do. I, I wanted. I did find something else that was very interesting on on their website because we always hear about. Um, Maggie Campbell, right? Uh, at least on my end from private tier. So I, w- I never knew like the 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 owner uh, was involved or how how much was he involved, right? And um, and it supposedly it says when our founder Andrew Caba traveled through the Caribbean to ponder rum futures, he met a distiller that had uh, had a secret bottle tucked away in their in their desk drawer. Moving forward, blah, 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 blah. Um, here, the experimental. Many of these bottles come from our experimental distillation, incorporating new techniques and ingredients. So it's just to see what happens, which is really good. It's just like they're just testing the, the it's like, why not? Let's just get a new barrel and, and taste and see how it comes out, right? Uh, which is phenomenal. And I, I'm a, I'm a big fan of experimenting things. Right? Absolutely. Um, the the next expression that we're gonna talk. I don't know. If, is that okay? Do you guys think that we talked enough about uh, the two brands? Sure. Oh, I think we're good. Okay, we're good. All right. Let me bring on. Uh, Da, 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 da. Ah, the real McCoy, all right. And now for this, we're gonna bring, of course, the founder of Real McCoy, Bailey, to talk about more about these expressions. And not about only about the expression, it's also what they have been able to accomplish with the with the CTB and everything that has to do with uh, labeling. Sure, sure, sure. So, um, yeah, we have a new, our new expression this year is our 12 year limited edition, um, you know, which is aged for 12 years in, in uh, ex bourbon casks and blended with um, uh, rum that's aged for 12 years in virgin oak. And so, Richard Seal, our master distiller at Four Square Distillery, does an amazing job of developing these products in, in concert with other, other brands that he produces to maintain a, a a uh, relationship among all of them um, so that they're sort of all in from the same family. Um, really beautiful stuff, incredibly well balanced. This one is, we've done it at 100 proof, that, which is the highest ABV of any real McCoy product so far. Um, and we did it at 100 proof in honor of the 100th anniversary of the enactment of Prohibition and the beginning of, of Bill McCoy's rum running uh, escapades. And so, uh, that which is this year. So um, we wanted to do it for that reason. So I sat down with Richard you know, like a year ago and started talking about how we're going to develop something along these lines. And so he came up with this particular strategy. And in that, um, you know, we, we've been we've been looking for a long time to, um, you know, to, to find a mechanism to have real transparency in alcohol labeling. Uh, because, you know, when you look at, at every kind of food that you can buy, at prepared foods, they're all mandated by the Food and Drug Administration in the United States to have um, ingredients and serving facts. If, even if you buy a bottle of water in the United States, it has to list their ingredients and serving facts on the bottle. But none of the beverage alcohol is required d- to do this. So you have no idea really what's in various products, including in most cases allergens. And I'm allergic to sulfites. So when I drink products that have sulfites in it, I break out in rashes, have histamine reactions. And, a, a, you know, a while back I was at a holiday party and I drank a beverage alcohol um, uh, and, and had a very bad histamine reaction, so much so that it was restricting my breathing. And if I just had on the label the little statement, you know, contained sulfites, I would have known not to drink it. But because we don't have these things in the United States, I had to suffer through something that was really terrifying. And, and I think a lot of other people do. And 
especially people with gluten allergies, people, you know, I made a whole documentary film on called Gluten Free. It's on PBS right now, um, all about how gluten affects people in very different ways and, and can be deadly to some people. So we've been fighting for this for a long time. And we for this year, we're the very first beverage alcohol brand in the United States to be granted by the TTB to allow us to put ingredients and serving facts on our actual bottle labels. So this is our new limited edition. It's called our Prohibition Tradition, the 100 proof for the 100 year anniversary. And on the back label right here, it has ingredients, rum and Barbados spring water. We also are certified gluten free and vegan friendly. And we have serving facts showing what the serving size is, the uh, carbs, calories, fat, protein, etc. And so this is a huge breakthrough in beverage alcohol because no one has ever done this before. There's no, not one beer, wine, spirit in American history that's ever been able to put ingredients and serving facts on their bottle label. And we've got lots of friends, especially in the rum family, who are really want to do this as well. They all want to put it up there. And the goal here is to allow real transparency to consumers because we have friends that are, are doing rums that are um, you know, blended with various um, you know, honey and, and flavor components, pineapple and things like that. And they're more than happy to disclose that. They talk about it in their marketing materials. So, you know, why not put that stuff on these labels and give people the opportunity to make an informed decision about what they're putting in their bodies. So um, that was a very big moment for us. And we're super proud of this. It was really, you know, Jennifer, my wife, Jennifer, really pushed for this to, to get it going. And it took, um, it's been about a three year uh, ride to get us to this point. But more importantly, um, in the, it took about nine months of, of real work to get this uh, approved by the TTB, and we're super thankful for them to do it. Um, so everything is listed here according to the Food and Drug Administration's, the FDA regulations. So anybody, any other producers out there that want to do this, feel free to contact me, and I can help you get information that you need to be able to do it. Because there's lots of really great products out there that I'm sure want to do this. In fact, Rafael Grissoni at Mount Gay called me. He was like, how did you do this? We've been trying to do this for years, you know. So uh, we'd love to have anybody who wants to join this uh, effort to voluntarily put this stuff on their labels. We can help you show you how to do it with the TTB. And uh, I think it's a great step forward uh, for public safety and for um, just transparency in general, which everybody knows that's where this is all going anyway. It's just a matter of time before it actually happens with all beverage alcohol. So um, we're, very, we're very proud of the way that came out. Yeah. And Billy, you, you share that somebody can call you. Do you have a 1-800 number that we can call you at? 1-800-TRANSPARENCY <laughs> in labeling. <laughs> just, uh, just email me. Go to our Real McCoy website. Just hit the hit contact, and you can, they'll get the email to me. But we're also, we're also doing lots yeah, of experimentation but, with these kinds of things. Sorry, Craig. No, no, and, and Ben, I just want to, you know, applaud you and your efforts in doing that, you know, from being on the side of talking to the consumers and talking to guests that actually come up and, you know, the, the, the consumer is far more aware and far more educated than they probably ever have been. Sure. Far, you know, the food world, which is a past life of mine, but even now the beverage world, they want to know, they're interested, they want to understand health conscious is a, is a huge priority for a lot of people. So, you know, from the operator's perspective of venues, you know, we applaud your efforts and, and, and the, you know, Thank you. Done Thank you, Craig. I really, really appreciate that. And uh, another fun note is we're very, very close to opening our new distillery in Connecticut. Ooh. So we have a little double retort pot still made by the Forsyth Company. And if you look in the background there, you can see our wooden open top fermenter tanks, those beautiful washbacks. Uh, and, you know, so we're just unpacking everything and setting it all up right now. It's going to be about another month or so and we'll be operational. And then we're going to do lots and lots of experimentation. It's a very small still that's basically a test still. Um, it's a little 300 liter double retort still from Foresight. And allows us to play with a lot of ideas and to, you know, develop various programs so that then we can later scale up to a much larger capacity and actually produce products. But this is going to be a whole lot of fun and experimentation. And for me, uh, you know, 10 years of work to get to a point where I'm actually prepared to, to start distilling. Um, you know, I've, obviously I've learned a tremendous amount from Richard Seal, who's been, really been my primary mentor, um, great friend and, and uh, you know, an absolute pleasure to learn from um, for the, about the last 10 years. And But I also did an apprenticeship in single malt whiskey in Scotland with uh, my friend Colin Poppy at the Ball and Dollar Distillery. And so uh, to be able to get that experience, put it all together, and uh, this kind of completes my journey from 
filmmaker to rum runner. So I'm very excited about getting this thing going. So anybody, if you're running through Mystic, Connecticut anytime soon, come look us up. We'll uh, I'll show you around. So I was actually going to ask you, I grew up in Rhode Island. So oh, I did ask, you? I was going to ask you where in Connecticut it's going. So Mystic is the Yeah, we're in, we're in Mystic. I'm, I'm born and raised in Mystic. So we, we set it up here. And, and uh, it's really great that we've been working like dogs trying to get the thing finished up. Um, but it's going to be very exciting. And we'll have lots of fun things. And when you come around our table at the rum festival, just come on around and just like with the Don Q, we'll have a little something on the side here you can taste and learn, <laughs> learn about what we're what we're playing with. Noted. Always the best way. <laughs> Plastic bottle. Unlabeled. Uh, <laughs> do how, how many bottles are, are have been released? Can you say that again? Of of the new limited edition, this one, uh, yeah. this six thousand bottles or seven thousand bottles worldwide. Um, we usually do about six thousand or so each year. Um, the majority ends up in the United States, but in the in the UK and in Europe, you can find us at Master of Malt and Whiskey Exchange. In the United States, you can buy us right now on Curiata, um, Wine.com, other others that are out there. Um, Curiata, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, so we've been having fun, um, you know, developing these products and and working with Richard Seal to really do the right thing. And and by the way, what we're creating in the warehouse is not going to be, um, you know, it'll, these will be independent expressions. So when you when you get real McCoy, it'll always be from Richard Seal. It'll always be you know re real McCoy structure. Um, these other things that we're experimenting with, I'm going to come up with all sorts of other fancy brand names, and eventually we'll have fun things uh, to to expand into. The real Fetty, it would be great. I think that would be yeah. <laughs> the real Fetty. <laughs> Everybody here needs to have a Fetty expression. <laughs> Fetty. What do you think? Be I like fun. Mystic Fetty. Give him the tank and pour some meat and water on him. Throw him in the still. It'll be like a chuga. Uh, all right, let's jump to uh, let's jump to the next expressions that we have here. All right, all right, and now we go to do, 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 do. Yeah, I know the here. It's with Bones Case Rum with Eric. Eric, I want to tell you something. You have a little bit of sound with your microphone when you move. Is it okay. a possibility that you can you remove your earphones? I can try that. I'm going to have to get the uh, sound coming out. Give me a sec because I can't hear anybody right now. Okay, okay we can all talk about Eric while he can't hear us. <laughs> you can talk about me. Uh, he wasn't crazy. He said, right. "He said I called him crazy when uh, when he told me he wanted to come because he's in the entertainment business too." Eric came from the music business, and we we actually crossed paths in that in that world. And he's he came up to me one time at this Jacques Pepin event and said, "Hey, I'm I'm thinking about getting into the rum thing. And what do you think?" And I didn't I didn't say you're crazy. I said I think it's fantastic. I totally support you. What can I do to help? <laughs> he did actually. He did. <laughs> And now, uh, Eric, you, are you going to do your intro with your bass guitar or something? Oh, like uh, the bass yeah. guitar. Uh, <laughs> or the ukulele. I'll, I'll send us out with oh, We do have a ukulele. Nice. Right. We have so lots of good. Oh, yeah. oh, excellent. Then right. the, the rollout. But um, so we put out three rums this year. And what I love most about rum is it really and truly is the most diverse of all of the spirits. Uh, evidenced by the fact by all three of these rums are from three completely different areas and none of them are the Caribbean, which is where rum's birthplace is. We have a Central American rum, a South American rum, and then a South Pacific rum, um, starting with this Fiji right here, which when I first tried a Fiji rum, was, ooh, you know, a while back, it was a Samaroli Fiji expression from 2001. And uh, blew me away. It was like no other rum I'd had before. And uh, I'd been searching for good aged rums from Fiji for a long time. Finally, we were able to find these bottles over in uh, these barrels in Liverpool. And I you know, immediately grabbed them. And uh, we put out this. It's mostly tropically aged. Uh, there's some aging in the warehouses in Liverpool. And uh, 58 is what it came out of the barrel at. We just thought it was perfect as is, so we just went straight from the barrel into the bottle. Uh, we originally did one because we had no idea what the reception would be. I thought it was amazing. I had no idea. You know, they're not cheap barrels, so 
we tried it with one and we sold out of it in a month, basically. So uh, thankfully we've got the second barrel ready to be bottled in about two weeks. So we will have, uh, the initial barrel was 240 bottles and we'll have another 240 coming uh, in about two or three weeks. So that was the Fiji, 100% uh, pot still rum from the South Pacific Distilleries, which is now owned by the Coca-Cola company. Um, but and Eric, you said that you said that was fifty-eight percent out of the barrel. That's interesting. That it would be that's a little under what, what's normal. Do you know what the strategy was there? I don't. The only thing I can think of is that it lost a lot of percentage over the fifteen years in the tropics. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was a pot still. I don't know what it went into the barrel at. Um, I know it's a lot lower than what it goes into the barrel at in Jamaica and Belize and other places, but. Yeah, maybe it's also just their preferred ABV. I mean, it's uh, it's up, yeah. to, up to the blender, you know, to decide. So yeah. that's interesting. Yeah, I'm just used to everybody being like 63, 63 and a half, 65, you know, that kind of thing. That's Caribbean. Yeah. Well, that's very Caribbean. Yeah. And yeah, and the Guyana, which was also, you know, 56 for um, for rum fans. I I say the Port Moran still is the most famous still in the world. It mm -hmm. really is this 250 year old double wooden pot still. Um, there's there's really nothing like it, and it really has such a unique flavor profile that you could identify it always. You know, you can pick out either in a blend of various rums or by itself. It's unmistakable the Port Moran, mm -hmm. and remarkably, it, it's really tough to find, at least in America, in a pure form like that. Um, at cast strength, undosed, um, and we wanted to bring that out to people. And again, we tried it with one cast because it wasn't cheap, and we didn't know what the reception would be, and we sold out of that one. And thankfully, we're able to grab a second barrel. Um, so both of these releases are going to be less than 500 bottles each. Um, and really, to me, descriptive of what those two rums those are, you know, Guyana obviously has so many different heritage stills, all in DDL's facilities. Um, the Enmore still is incredible. The Versailles, the Versailles, it's not Versailles. Um, the Port Morant, uh, it, they have such amazing, unique flavor profiles, each of them. Um, hey, Eric. Yes. Uh, question for you and also a comment. One is, uh, Fijian rum is so rad. I also had an experience of having just something and being like, wow, what the hell? I think it was, I'm pretty sure it was like a scotch bottler that somebody poured for me that was like real high octane and real crazy and real interesting. I wish we could see more of them. So that's super, super rad that you're doing it. Um, where are you bottling these? Are they all coming to one place? Are you doing it on site? Like what's your, what's your game plan? So the Fiji and the Guyana, we bottled in New York State, a mm. distillery called Five and Twenty um, outside of Buffalo. Uh, it's also the place where Hamilton bottles Hamilton rums. So um, oh, they're wow. wonderful. They really know how to do it right and not, you know, not mess up when you're dealing with these delicate aged casks. It's it's easy to screw them up. Um, so they've been wonderful partners. Um, On to the third rum that we released this year, which is a little bit different because it's our first, I like to say, dependent bottling in which we actually did it down in Belize with the Traveler's Distillery. Um, and it's a, a family-owned distillery. I think they did a Zavi, didn't they, Betty? The yeah, Perdomo they did. Family. Old worst box. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, amazing, amazing family-owned distillery. They have this manually operated three-column still. Um, that they coax amazing variety of flavors out of. Uh, they really know they're still. Um, and when I first approached them about doing this, they were a little disbelief that somebody would want to drink a cast strength rum from them with nothing done to it. Because in Belize, it's bottled at 36%. That's the way the Belizeans like to drink it. They get a lot for their money at that proof. and. They've done some other additions and bottlings with other people, but not really a fully tropically aged cast strength rum out of there. So they were curious to try it as well and shocked that uh, 
we sold out of this one as well in, in less than a month, the first barrel as a pilot. And thankfully, we've got three more that we're bottling uh, as soon as we can get the glass down there. So we will have a thousand bottles of this one in total. Um, this one is is also, you know, it's it's hard to rave about each of them, and they're like your babies, but it's a spectacular rum. Um, and unlike the pot stills, this is a column still rum, and you do get a tremendous amount of flavor. Uh, they have a really high loss to angel share in Belize. They were losing originally a, almost 10% a year until they realized if they insulated the warehouse, they could get that down to about seven or eight. So that, there's no coloring added to that. That's pure, um, that barrel influence, that charred Buffalo Trace barrels is what they use. Um, so those are the three we put out this year. We've got some great ones coming up in store for the end of this year and next year, but I don't want to really talk about them. Come on, please. <laughs> <laughs> the one that uh, somebody found the TTB label already is uh, it's a Barbados rum from a distillery that barely knows. The people that it. Don't you love that? Those people that camp out at the on the TTB website and then they totally like out you. It's like they out you. I didn't have time to take a photo. I don't even have it bottled yet, but um, it is a rum from Barbados. Um, and a distillery that Bailey knows very well. Um, but what we did, Which one could that be? Uh, <laughs> what we did was we brought a couple of barrels to New York, and when we got them, we transferred them to port casks, so where they've been sitting for a full year. So nice. this month we're going to have a, a port cask Barbados rum coming out. Um, in October. So we're excited about that. And then next year will be some countries that uh, we haven't seen rum from in the States, really. Uh, definitely not a cast rank. So, hey, uh, Eric, I don't want to... selfishly, yes. uh, do you? I haven't seen the. Are you in Nevada? Not yet. Okay. Not I'm yet. A, I'm a huge Fiji rum fan. The first one I had was the Samaroli bottlings, which you know I thought mm -hmm. was fantastic. Spectacular rum. Um, so, and you don't see very many of them. So mm -hmm. when you said you had the Fiji, I was like, oh. And then I've never had a Belize rum either. So, you know, if you, you know, need help getting into the state let me know and we'll we're, we're, look at this matchmaking we'll definitely we'll definitely we're about, to, uh, we're about to launch in california and arizona by the end of the year so nevada is just uh we got to triangulate that to get the whole yeah, we can make it happen trinity. eric i think what you're doing is fantastic because you know talking to you i think it was just like two years ago and you were saying i'm thinking about doing this and then just watching you get to this place so quickly with all these great rums. Uh, it's really, really fun to see this. Cause I, you know, you travel around and you go to all the rum festivals and you meet lots of people who are very excited about rum and only a few really, really get into it and really go out there, you know, like Pete, what you're doing and, and, and Eric, what you're doing, I just think is really fun to see people just going after it with that passion, that entrepreneurial spirit. There's so much risk to it. You know, I know of myself not growing up in a beverage alcohol family, you know, this is a, I'm the first generation to do this in my family. So it's it's a it's a huge risk. It's a huge investment, and it's a huge reward when you when people look at your stuff and just say, "Hey, man, that's fantastic!" And I want you to know, I love your stuff. So congratulations, Thank Eric. Thank you, Belly. It was you too, Pete. It's just a love festival, everybody. Love festival. <laughs> you know, when I was trying to convince my wife, who is uh, my partner in this company as well, um, I said, "Worst case scenario, we're out a good chunk of money, but we have enough rum to drink for the rest of our lives." <laughs> And now as we're growing, we're out even more money, and I have no rum to drink because we've sold it all. <laughs> well, before this uh, stream concludes, we have to bring Maura to the screen, and we have to bring Jennifer to the screens because these are two phenomenal women that are part of this Jennifer. movement. Come here. One hundred percent. I think she's a. Uh... Jennifer just came back from jogging, so here. Oh. Perfect. Perfect. Love it. Perfect. Yeah. Let's see if I can get her to come down. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll make Jennifer so oh. she looks bigger. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Oh. Yeah. So, yes. Full dress for the occasion here. <laughs> it really is true behind every successful company. <laughs> yep. Because she she you developed all of this. This is all her. Like she does the, the, all of our marketing, our design, our packaging, our social media, all that. It's, you know, the stuff behind us here, everything that's all being created is all done through Jennifer's artwork. 
So, Bailey, what do you do? Nothing. I'm talking about. <laughs> <talking. laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, just show up and talk at live streams. <laughs> so here's here's my secret weapon. There we go. Hi. Um, Hi, everybody. Also responsible for the design, the marketing, the branding. Um, nice. <laughs> turn off that. We're getting the echo there. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and, you know, been completely supportive. I, we definitely would not have had this... Uh, company without her full support yeah yeah nice job guys she Good was job. a bourbon drinker when i met her let me just let it oh, be okay. known and he's been arguing me ever since he saw me with that bourbon in the hand i've been told there's one you could be drinking so that's how i got into hey, it so, some people are bringing you closer to enlightenment and this is where five gurus right here that are <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's jump to the next expression here. Um, you brought the Malibu in? I thought that was a joke. I, I brought the Malibu. Here we go. There we go. No. <laughs> there we go, the Hampton, right on. Uh, and we got two expressions here. Uh, the Hampton, right, the great house, uh, the Hillary edition, and we have the Appleton Estate journey. Um, what, what? I have not been able to taste neither of these rums. Uh, have, have, have any one of you guys been able to taste one of these rums? No. The Great House, but not the 23. Uh, 23 you can only get in Jamaica, as far as I know. Yeah, I, think that's I right. had Joy on my live stream, but she didn't send me any of that, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that I thought we had a deal. But not apparently- Not been in the business for a decade, Pete. You know, that's <laughs> never gonna, you know. <laughs> yeah. So Hamden at least put out another rum in the States, which disappeared immediately, which was the Hamden New York edition, which was just one barrel of, I think, 220 bottles. And I heard 150 of those went right over to Europe immediately because everybody wanted it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's a spectacular rum, as is the Great House. Um, they're just doing amazing things, I think, at Hamden. They really are. And they're sure. lovely people, too. Christelle's amazing. It's a really, really lovely family. Um, I think what they're creating is is amazing, and and it's so fun to see everybody else recognizing what you know what they're doing with Richard and Luca Gargano going over there and and teaming up to make um, uh, Probitas and and uh, and have the that partnership with them. I thought was really really an interesting strategy and a good way to to blend you know Jamaica and Barbados together. And and it it takes uh, you know Luca and Gargano and Richard Steele and the you know, everybody in, in Christelle's family to put that together. I, I just think it's fabulous stuff. And of course, you know, Joy Spence at Appleton is, you know, just one of the great masters of, of, of all time. And I think it's really fun to see the experimentation that they're, that she's able to do with these guys at, at this stage and, and continue to grow and grow and grow. You know, and that's not as easy when you have a big company, you know, a big brand like Appleton, right. it's a huge ship and turning that ship is not an easy thing to do. And it really takes, I think, a, a you know, vision from the part of their leadership, but also, you know, a real sense of, of, um, of craftsmanship on the part of, of uh, Joy to make that come to fruition. Yeah, yeah. Joy was uh, really not, I was trying to pry out some details about what was coming next, and it was uh, it was a closed box. There was very <laughs> little revealed. Yeah. <laughs> and their new bottle and everything, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, we, we definitely talked the new bottle. Um, and it sounds like there's some exciting things that really will highlight her skill set uh, yep. ahead, but but it was it was also very vague. <laughs> yeah, and similarly, you know, it, it wasn't. I haven't seen it represented here yet. But what Trudy Ann is doing down at, at Mount Gay, you know, and and, and uh, you know, they're just doing some really amazing stuff. And I think it's fun that um, Trudy Ann is such a lovely person. Um, but the products that she's coming out with, and her, I think her her spark at this um, at Mount Gay is going to be really great in the years ahead. You, you know, she's very young and in a very big position, but she's got great talent. So I think, you know, as we go into the, another decade or two of her experience, the sky's the limit for Mount Gay. I think we're going to see some really beautiful things coming out of that, that camp. Yeah. And Bailey, um, that was something you, you had mentioned earlier, you know, for Appleton being such a large company, usually large companies innovation tends to fall flat in its quality and it's, uh, meaningfulness, if you will, and it's great exactly. to, yeah. to, be able to still run a very large company, still be able to keep the brand identity of Appleton and still have that same thread, 
but still yep. being able to do something that's cool and interesting without doing it for the sake of doing it and it becoming a miss and then you know brand equity starts slowly dying after that so yeah that's exactly your point like yeah i think they did a great job with it i love how this whole conversation has just turned into sports center for rum <laughs> <laughs> we've got the michael jordan of all the rum makers is there you know and then over here at hampton it's just hilarious i think it's great <laughs> we should have called it that oh that would have been so good <laughs> Well, well, next year, so sports center run for sure. On this expression, in particular, the great house, um, it says Vivian Wisdom, the master distiller at Hampton Estate, was responsible for the blending of this rum. Period, right? Um, and then, so unlike so many of the independent bottling, uh, independent bottling, bottling of Hampton, this is not a single cast rum. Uh, which is super interesting. And there are indeed 3,000 bottles have been released um, under this expression. And then for the the journey, they said, so, correct, as uh, Eric was mentioning, it's only available at the at Apple, uh, Appleton Estates and only 476 bottles were uh, made. Which I, is love that, I love that as soon as Betty started talking, Craig put his mask back on. <laughs> <laughs> completely unrelated uh, there's more people in the room than there were when i was by myself oh, okay there you go hey, Craig, you, i, I want to see the, the 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 fountain on action before uh when, when it goes off next i will be sure to turn around it hasn't it's not on right now all right we are in prime viewing area and he's trying to out right after you, buddy. <laughs> take it easy all right well Guys, I think this is we have. Uh, these are all the expressions that I have on the list. Um, the really quickly, if this is all thanks to our, our account, uh, our partners at Patreon. Well, that's me. Yes. Uh, if whoever wants to support us, it would be great. We have our Patreon account. If it's five dollars a month, and you have a limited of access to all our content. We have uh, over 160 live streams, all educational. Uh, primarily about rum and whiskey, uh, but we also have uh, other content uh, in, regarding whiskey. It's a, it's a blend of, of bourbon and scotch. But uh, and then I think let's go to our Q and A really quickly. Let's see if there's any questions. If there are any, there is one. There is one um, from Meredith. Hi, Meredith. Um, do I have any regions I have my eye on for future cast strength releases and plans for consistent bottling? The answer to both is yes. No, no, I'll go into a little more. Um, yes, I, I do have some rums that uh, we'd like to bring in from countries that we have not seen rum from in the States um, at cast strength or at all. Uh, some countries that are off the beaten path that you wouldn't expect. Um, but until I have those barrels in possession, or I don't want to jinx anything yet on those. Um, but for a consistent blend, a product is also something we're looking into coming out with. Right now, our rums are mostly priced $99 and up, and we would love to be able to come out with something in that $40 to $50 range that we can produce on a consistent basis. It's not going to be a single barrel expression, but um, I, I think there's some definite areas where we can come out with something that is really yummy that's not out there yet in that range. So yes to both. And, and Eric, those prices were referring to? Uh, yes, yeah, retail prices. And uh, one other thing to keep in mind, everybody, while we're, uh, you know, are some of the other expressions out there that, that are, are, you know, people doing really beautiful stuff that we didn't talk about today. There's plenty of them. Um, but one would be, you know, Karen Hoskin up at um, uh, uh, Montagna. Montagna. Yeah, well, I, can't, I can't remember. She's a good friend. Uh, Montagna, they're doing a great job making some really beautiful products. Um, our friends at Chairman's Reserve, um, you know, in and in, uh, in, in English Harbor rums also doing great jobs. Um, yeah. and of course, all those lovely um, uh, uh, rum agricoles, rum Clement, rum Nissan, rum JM, Trois Rivières, La Favorite. You know, there's so many great.
products out there. And that's what makes Rome so much fun is you can sort of surf around and try to find their limited editions and, uh, and really explore the whole world. Uh, it's amazing. Um, I think Fiji's getting a lot of attention now. Um, and it's, and it's really great to see, uh, that recognition that I think they really deserve, um, in terms of their, the quality of their production, but there's lots of stuff out there and you can, you can kind of hunt around and really gain these incredible experiences from cachaça to agriculture to, to Jamaican rums to Barbadian rums and, and so on. The American rums, uh, really and, beautiful stuff. And these countries that you don't think of like Japan and South Africa. Oh yeah. yeah Yoshi, Yoshi and Japan. Africa, yeah. Yoshi with nine leaves in Japan. Yeah. I mean, these are, yeah. I would love to get either of those in the United States. Yep. Yep. Is that yeah. is that a, is that a secret that you're already revealing? No, no. I, uh, I, I, uh, I have not, you know, Yoshi says he ha he doesn't have enough barrels. It's he just, won't give you any. Yeah, he's he, Yoshi. Yoshi is selling every single bottle that he makes. I think we all had that idea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that was the accepted speech part, Bailey. I want to thank God, my wife, all these other amazing rums. There's no I in team. <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone, uh, for all of us in the business, you, we get to meet everybody, so you know about all these rums. But there's so many consumers out there that are they haven't had the chance, or they don't know, they haven't had the access to it yet. And you might walk right by it on the liquor store because there's only one bottle, one facing on the shelf, so you don't really notice it. So if you, you know, if we keep all of us keep talking about these things, it'll stick in people's minds. They're like Chairman's Reserve. I know I've seen that somewhere. What is that? This fantastic rums bounty. You know, just great stuff that, that people are making out there that I think is, is a real fun experience to go uh, go explore. And definitely come to the rum festivals because what Fetty's doing around the United States is incredible. And, and you really get very nice representation of what's available globally. Um, so you, it's a real fun experience. Yeah, and even from, you know, to echo that, Bailey, you know, from the, the other side, not being the producer, but being the middle user of, of the product, it, it's great to see all of the products that the, the three of you guys are putting together uh, to grow the rum industry. Cause you know, it's a, we all, we all know it's, it's been a very uh, blurry line of the quality in that category for many years um, because of the lack of restrictions on every country that gets to produce it. There's no, you know, general guidelines like there are in other pure categories. Um, but it's great to see, you know, the, the, the three of you like putting together the high quality products you're doing and sort of making and, and driving that category uh, of rum to be a spirit that's not just something you mix with Coke or in a pina colada or in, you know, a, a strawberry daiquiri, but it is actually, there's really good product that is available. There's really good, there's, there's ways to make it to be in the same, um, the same race as the other you know, whiskeys of the world or, or, you know, other high um, thought of or sought after products. So it's, it's really exciting. And, you know, from our side, being able to provide those things uh, to our guests and to the consumers and to people that come to it, like you, you, you guys are making our job easier. So I, it, it's appreciated. And I don't know if you guys hear it enough, but, you know, keep doing what you guys are doing for sure. Thank you. Don't really hear it very much. Yeah, <laughs> it's you know, our battle is we're not just building our brands, but we're also building a market. Like, yeah, we're all elevating a, a whole category. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Premium yeah. rum. Yep, it's yeah. true. Yeah. So, Appreciate it, man. You know, it, it's similar to what we say about in Las Vegas. You know, we want yes, is win one of our properties? No, is season one of our properties? No, but we want to grow Las Vegas as a city. Sure. You guys are talking about you want to you know to grow rum as a category because if everybody grows, then everybody grows. And yep. it's a for everybody. Um, so you know, but but again, from the the consumer side, uh, keep doing what you guys are doing. Yeah, thank you, Craig. Thank you. Yeah. Well, Craig, the whole goal is that we are able to meet at the Miami Rum Congress in February 2021. That was the last event we were all together at, and then hopefully we we're able to make it. I am from Fest. That was the last time I was on an airplane, Fetty. I fly like every week, wow. and that was the last time I was on an airplane was coming home from the from the Rome Congress. When, when did you know, take it from conference? You know, Craig, it wouldn't be Sports Center if somebody wasn't wasn't okay, crying. Right. And that last delivery you gave just made me cry. Reading <laughs> <laughs> it off my head. <laughs> All right, yeah, well, thank you very much. 
Thank uh, you. Have a great weekend. I appreciate everybody's time. Uh, it's, Thank you, I'm Faye. sure we'll do another edition as well to talk about other expressions. It was a lot of fun. Thanks Thank you, guys. Be well. Thank you very much. I'll leave you everybody with my next event, which is next Wednesday. Uh, and whoever can join us, uh, it'll be phenomenal. All right. Bye bye, everyone. Eric's taking us out. Bye. Bye. <laughs>